Hello and welcome to Foreign Dispatches on Channels Television. Thank you so much for joining us on today's edition. I'm Anne Mwawadu. South Africa is to escalate screening, testing and contact tracing as the number of confirmed cases continue to increase, reaching over 1,000 fatalities have also been recorded. President Cyril Ramaphosa says that he's very worried that some people are still not taking the situation seriously, given the conduct despite the lockdown in the country. The next phase of the COVID management program involves massive testing and contact tracing involving 10,000 field workers workers, especially in rural areas. Our bureau chief in Johannesburg, Betty Dibia, reports. Wow. Health Minister Dr. Zuelim Kizi launching the 60 additional mobile testing units added to the existing seven. Dr. Mkizi addressing the media after the ceremonies admitted that while thankfully the progression of confirmed cases may have slowed down because of current measures, the nightmare may be far from over, especially with the approaching flu season, a measure of non-compliance and increasing local transmission. With the incidence of COVID-19 uh, COVID rising to more than 1,353, 1, uh, uh, and of course we have had the figure today, COVID outbreak has moved from an important traveler-based outbreak to local community transmission, where the Department of Health remain concerned that the lockdown will not be enough and that we need to ensure that COVID cases are identified. Internal transmission has started, and it may, be, it may have a tendency to spread silently as people with less means and slight symptoms may be slow to seek medical help as they are few and far apart. Gauteng province, where you have Johannesburg and Pretoria, has over 600 confirmed cases, about a half of the nation's total. Door-to-door -door screening and testing has already begun in Alexandra Township, with the Premier, David Makura, leading the mission. We are starting in Alexandra for many, many reasons, one of which is because it's a vulnerable area. It's an area of high vulnerability because of the density, the number of people who live here, but also people uh, are living, large numbers uh, living together, their household sizes are huge. Uh, but there, there's also vulnerability to incidences of poverty and hunger. Uh, so it is an area of great concern for us. We already have uh, one case uh, of someone who tested positive here and left for Limpopo. We have uh, quarantined those that were immediately uh, in contact with him. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, we work very closely with our communities uh, to protect the people of our country. Kailicha, another township this time in Cape Town, it also has a positive case confirmed. President Sir Ramaphosa Monday announced the next phase of the fight against COVID-19, which comprises door-to-door -door screening, testing and medical management involving about 10,000 field workers. People with symptoms will be referred to local clinics, or mobile clinics for testing. People who are infected with the coronavirus but who have no or moderate symptoms will remain in isolation at home or at a facility provided by government and those with severe symptoms will be transferred to hospitals. 300 proposed sites for quarantine and treatment have been marked for inspection in preparation for the worst case scenario. It's one month after South Africa's first case was confirmed and the number stands at more than 1,300. 31 people have recovered and trials are in the works. We will be participating in uh, 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 trials. One trial will involve Ramdes Ramdesivir that's the one drug which is antiviral. Then the other group uh, will be uh, using chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. Uh, that you know the drug that's being used for um, uh, malaria <coughs> and uh, uh, rheumatoid, uh, uh, rheumatoid uh, uh, conditions. And then uh, the other one is lopinavir with ritonavir. Again, those are antiretroviral, uh, are used on HIV. But then in the other one, is used, is, they will be using lopinavir with ritonavir. 
A clinic in Ekruleni near Johannesburg has been shut down after a nurse working there tested positive. She also attended a church conference in the Free State where a number of people have tested positive last month. Five deaths have been recorded so far and Minister Mkize warns that that number could rise. One of the dead is prominent vaccine scientist and HIV researcher Professor Gita Ramji. She recently returned from a UK conference without any symptoms. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia for Foreign Dispatches. As the United Arab Emirates government doubles its effort to fight COVID-19 pandemic, the closure of airports has already affected the importation of food items from Nigeria. Food vendors from Nigeria lament the slowdown of business and in some cases there's a shutdown of restaurants. Our correspondent in Dubai, Maywa Adegoke, monitored the affairs. With each passing day, the measures and rules implemented by the UAE government to tackle the rising number of COVID-19 cases become more stringent and for good reason. Recently, government has had to shut down the entire private sector, airports are closed, malls, as well as open markets. A decision which is now impacting Nigerian food vendors in different ways. Located in the heart of the once busy financial district, Pan-African restaurant Kiza observes its last day of business until the health situation in the city of Dubai improves. Silence. Empty chairs and tables now replace the liveliness that once attracted Nigerian tourists and residents seeking local dishes and entertainment. Most are now at home practicing social distancing. Initially, the government told um, all the restaurants to um, shut down, but you can do delivery. But now it's not about the business anymore. It's about our people internally and the general community as a whole. Um, if this virus is getting so, um, so deadly in the way that it is spreading from communities to communities and from persons to persons, we just thought it right that for the safety of all our um, in-house employees and the general community as a whole um, to just shut down. This decision will affect is over 60 members of staff, including Benga, one of the only two chefs on final duty. Yeah, I've, I talked to my some of my friends also about this, that I was the next step to go. But people also don't have idea, but people are scared about losing job and how to cater for their family back home. Also here in Dubai, we need to pay our rents. People don't have idea on how to pay these rents now because the landlords will surely come and ask for his rent, but we don't know how to go about this for now. 19 kilometers away in another part of town, Biggie's restaurant remains open with a few customers making bulk orders. <laughs> However, concerns are growing about the dwindling food stock. It's really affecting my business in terms of half of what we are cooking here coming from Africa. So like, we don't have pepper, we don't have a lot of things that come from Africa now. We didn't get it easily because it's coming through airport. And since there's no airport working for now, so we can't get any stuff from Africa. And if, likewise here in Dubai, something that we buy like 20 dirham now, we can buy 50 dirham, we can buy 60 dirham, and it's very expensive. But we don't have choice, we have to buy it. But now, since yesterday now, there's no market and there's no grocery that is open now that we can get things for cooking. So we have managed what we have on ground now because I don't want my people to suffer for food. Many customers depend on restaurant services for their daily meals and hope the businesses keep running. Uh, some of us don't know how to cook. Uh, some that even know how to cook. I can't even remember when last I went to the market to buy things to stock my house. So it is really, really a big issue. And uh, we feel there should be some exceptions, especially in the food area, you know, so that people like us will be able to um, feed and um, survive in this corona issue. Other Nigerian food vendors, such as this store, are also running out of supplies as buying patterns change. Although what we are praying for is to, the thing to come to an end. Although we have our packing store, we have to install our goods. But the way people are buying something now, we believe in next 
two or three weeks now on highest one month. At least our stock we finish. So we are only playing to God to help us to calm the situation down so that we will be able to bring our goods to this place. That is the problem we are having now. Well, with Nigerian food vendors running out of supplies, Nigerians partial to local dishes may have to depend on foreign delicacies for sustenance. From Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, Maya Wadigoke for Channel's television news. Government across the world devised measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 in their domain. One of those measures is to pronounce a lockdown while ensuring the stay-at-home directive is not another burden on the people. Meanwhile, hospitals across the world are witnessing an increase in COVID-19 patients as rigorous tests and contact tracing continue. Head of Britain's National Health Service, Sir Simon Stevens, visits the renamed Nightingale Hospital in East London. A once Excel Centre trade show venue turned a massive hospital in response to the coronavirus outbreak. Sir Stevens describes the move as an extraordinary team effort. Tens of hospital beds and medical equipment are already in place. Today there are over 9,000 positive coronavirus patients in hospitals across England and we know that number is only going to increase. That's why what you see here is a mass mobilisation taking place right across the country but also at these new Nightingale hospitals. This has been an extraordinary team effort on the part of uh, nurses and doctors and therapists and pharmacists across London but also volunteers and paramedics and people returning to help. And when these services are needed they will be available beginning later this week and because this is a global health emergency we're actually seeing similar types of hospitals being established in berlin and madrid and new york the nhs is also setting up two new temporary hospitals in birmingham and manchester britain is bracing for the epidemic to peak in the coming weeks The country is largely on lockdown, with Britain's urge to stay home. Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who's also tested positive to COVID-19, urges citizens to stick to strict rules to prevent the publicly funded NHS from being overwhelmed by a surge in cases. The UK has registered over 22,000 cases of coronavirus and 1,408 deaths, according to the Health Ministry. A 1,000-bed Navy hospital ship docks in Manhattan. As officials in New York City, the epicenter of COVID-19 outbreak in the U.S., pleads for more help from Washington. The USNS Comfort steams into New York Harbor, accompanied by a flotilla of support ships and helicopters hovering ahead. We all watched something absolutely extraordinary, absolutely inspiring as the USNS Comfort entered New York Harbor, coming here to save the lives of New Yorkers in our hour of need. Well, we've all been through a lot these last few weeks, and we needed this boost. We needed this hope that's being created by our brothers and sisters in the U.S. Navy and the Marine Corps, everyone who is here to help us at this crucial moment. This ship arriving is not just an example of help arriving in a physical form. It's not just about the beds and the doctors and the equipment. It's also about hope. It's also about boosting the morale of New Yorkers who are going through so much. It's about saying to our heroes in those hospitals. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo a prominent public figure in the battle to stop the virus waits at Midtown Manhattan Pier when the converted oil tanker arrives. According to the Navy, the Comfort will treat non-coronavirus patients, including those who require surgery and critical care. Hospitals in New York City have been overrun with patients suffering from COVID-19. According to the governor, the makeshift facility provided by Mount Sinai Health Systems and non-profit organization Samaritan's Purse will not take walkings and admissions and transfers will be managed by Mount Sinai. 
borders all over the world have closed in efforts to contain the spread of coronavirus. But the hunt for a vaccine is international with hundreds of scientists around the world collaborating to find an effective treatment. That's it in this next report. There are currently no vaccines or treatments for the highly contagious COVID-19 respiratory illness, so patients can only receive support care for now. Scientists around the globe have launched studies to see whether widely available, low-cost generic drugs can be used to help treat the illness caused by the new coronavirus. In Denmark, Professor Jen Lundgren and his team at the Danish National Hospital is heading the Europe effort to test the experimental antiviral drug Remdesivir to see if it works against coronavirus. I think what is critically important uh, for us at the moment is to do uh, international uh, collaboration and coordination so we study a few candidates so we get some clear answers during this uh, first wave of the, of the pandemic uh, so we can be even more prepared for the ne next wave. Lundgren says one person had received the vaccine and that they were now awaiting clearance from authorities for phase one of the trial that could start in June. The drug was initially developed by the U.S. company Gilead Sciences for Ebola, but never used. It is a drug which is given to hospitalized patients via intravenous infusion over several days. The first uh, patient was vaccinated, and the first person, I should say, is vac was vaccinated, I believe, three days ago. Uh, so we hope to get clearance for the phase one in June, and then we can scale up to what's called phase two with even more patients, uh, a couple of hundred. If that also looks good in the, uh, in the fall, then we can scale it up to a phase three trial, uh, hopefully in the in the third quarter and the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, and uh, whether Europe will be involved with that uh, vaccine uh, testing, um, I, I, I think so, but uh, that decision has not been made at the moment. The New England Journal of Medicine had earlier described how the drug was successfully used on the first patient infected by the novel coronavirus in the United States. You essentially can only uh, study these drugs and demonstrate the benefit and potential side effect in people who are actually is suffering from the infection. And obviously, we don't want to experimentally induce any corona infection in otherwise healthy people. So essentially, we have to wait until an outbreak is happening and then study the drug during the outbreak. That's the only way to really uh, get your head around whether uh, any of these interventions actually work or not. Remdesivir is one of approximately 50 drugs that have been identified as potentially effective in beating the virus. Bolivia has sent troops into the street to enforce a strict quarantine to avoid more coronavirus cases, leaving informal workers in a crisis with no way to earn money and bans on leaving their homes. Many people are still struggling to find enough food to get from one day to the next. This and other related stories coming up next. 36-year-old Mary Mamani is the mother of an 8-year-old boy. She has been eating only fruit and cereal for the past few days because she hasn't been paid in two weeks. Mary works as a taxi driver. She has run out of money to buy food following the pedestrian and vehicle circulation restrictions imposed by the Bolivian government. Bolivia imposed measures to prevent coronavirus, including a rule that only one person per family older than 18 years old and younger than 65 years old can go out to buy food within a six-hour window. Mary lives in a suburb far from grocery stores and must walk about four hours to buy food. She has reduced her food rations to feed her son. Como madre, as a mother, it is painful because you open your refrigerator and see it's empty. Every day the food runs out. As a mother, I don't know what I'm going to feed my son. For example, three weeks ago I bought some chickens because I walked with my taxi. I kept the chicken for my son so he doesn't starve. Bolivian interim president Jeanne Anez takes additional economic measures to protect against the fallout of the global coronavirus pandemic. 
The government announces a family bonus of 500 pesos, that is about $72, to help the families during the quarantine period. The lockdown in Bolivia ends in April, but Mary believes authorities will extend the quarantine, putting their survival and that of millions of Bolivians in danger. In this area, there is no market, much less a supermarket. I live in a very remote area. There are also many women who have several children who have been abandoned by their partners. I wonder how they will be if I, with a child, is suffering from hunger. Bolivia is the most informal economy in the world, according to the International Monetary Fund, with 62.3% of workers are self-employed without wages or social security. Kiko Afonso is the executive director of Akao Citizenship Action, one of the largest and renowned NGOs in the country. Over the last two years, he led a complete restructuring process, putting the NGO in a new track focused on young, vulnerable people on three main areas, culture, citizenship and entrepreneurship, innovation, developing projects in partnership with major partners such as UNESCO and Ford Foundation. Afonso says vulnerable families need help now more than ever before. Uh, what we're attending is like uh, 10,000, 20,000 families per week, but we need uh, 100,000, 200,000 and whatever we can get actually to feed the country because joining those 15.4 million people that are, are on extreme poverty already, we have now more than 30 million people that work on informality jobs, informal jobs and in jobs that don't pay uh, well, that don't have a, a, a relationship of, of work, that they can maintain their work even now that with their quarantine. Glaucia Farias de Almeida, who lives in one of Brazil's crowded slums and is raising her two grandchildren, welcomes the help. She has been unable to continue her job as a cleaner during this time. Muito obrigada, muito obrigada por tudo. Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's two most populous and most affected states, have shut down non-essential businesses and public gatherings to slow the spread of the virus. Brazil's government maintains it will expedite cash payments of 600 rias, that is $117, to poor citizens struggling during the coronavirus outbreak once the Senate passes a bill that clears the lower house. Russians have long rallied on Danchez, an out-of-town cottages with plots of land as a source of refuge and food during times of political and economic turmoil. Now that the number of coronavirus cases is creeping up in the cities, the second homes have taken on a new role, self-isolation hideouts. Take a look. Demand for rented dachas surged around Moscow as people escaped the crowded capital, where at the last count, authorities had confirmed 1,226 infections out of a total of 1,836 nationwide. Six people have also died in Moscow due to the virus, and that's according to the authorities as of the 30th of March. Families who don't already own one typically start renting dachas to return to them during the summer month for weekends and longer breaks. The Income Real Estate Agency says bookings have risen to 14% over the past three weeks compared with the same period in the previous year. We have a lot of communication with China, Korea, with the world in general. We have seen the difficulties in the world faces. We are mathematicians, IT specialists. We make complex corporate products, so we predicted that we're going to face the same thing. Private Dacha plot survived Soviet-era land seizures by the state and became a means of basic survival for many during the food shortages. Authorities in the Russian capital have announced a partial lockdown, ordering residents to stay at home to slow the spread of the coronavirus, though people are still allowed to enter and exit the city. 
People advised others over the age of 65, as well as those with chronic illnesses, to turn to their datches once again to reduce the risk of infection. And that's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to keep up with all our top stories. You can do it on channelstv.com. I'll see you again next time. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Anne Mwawudu.